Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, it's John from Heroes and Legends. Guess what? Today we have another Rivals of Ixalan pre-release pack. We're going to open up. We're going to do another deck build with it. I'm going to do the opening a little quicker this time because if you saw the last video, you got to see kind of all the contents. This time I'm going to go straight to the packs. Uh, that's assuming I can get into the cellophane, which is never an easy task for me, as you know if you've watched these videos before. And all right, here we go. I think maybe we got it. All right. So much for going fast. All right. So if you haven't seen these videos before, what we're going to do is open the packs and we're going to build a sealed deck. We'll pretend it's the pre-release. And our last sealed deck was a little weak. I won't lie. It was a rough pool. Hopefully we got some more powerful cards this time around to mess around with. Um, there's our spin down die. We got the white one this time. I'm going to try to obscure the card so that it's a surprise. Um, it is not a double-sided card this time. So what is it? It is a uh, Seashore and Ceratops. Okay, so that is our first card we're going to have to work with here. And let's open the rest of the packs and see what we get. With the Ixalan first. Um, and these videos really are about, you know, just kind of my thought process. A lot of people will do different things when they build a sealed deck. It's, I like this rare, this common actually, it's called Ugry. A lot of people will do different things, and a lot of it comes down to preference, what kind of play style you enjoy. So don't feel like this is the right answer or anything like that. This is just my thought process in the deck that I would end up with once we go through my thought process. Uh, Rigging Runner, Chart of Course, Merfolk Branch Walker, and we get a Dragon Skull Summit. Cool card, not always what you want to see when you're playing sealed, though. <laughs> if you happen to be in those colors, it's fantastic. But the odds of you ending up in the colors, not always good. I mean, sometimes they're good for a splash, too. They're not the worst things in the world, but they are taking away from, like, a potential rare bomb or something like that. So I'm usually not thrilled to see them, but when I do end up playing them, I'm pretty happy. Steadfast Armasaur, Favorable Winds. Dead Eye Quartermaster, our rare is Captain Lannery Storm. Okay. All right, so there's our two Ixalan packs. Let's start opening the rivals. We didn't get any mythics in our last one. It'd be nice to kind of hit a mythic. Like, getting a bomb that we can kind of build around a little bit would be sweet. Although, you got to be careful. Sometimes you get a bomb, but the rest of the cards in that color are bad. You can't really always go down that route, and you want to really bad. Slippery Scoundrel, Charging Tuscadon. Cacophodon. How rare. Hey, it's a journey to eternity. This might be something. Oh, it goes flying. Um, this might be something. It journeyed all the way over here to the end of the table. Um, <laughs> but this might be something you can build around, perhaps. And we'll kind of see what else we pull. Like, that is a card that I actually want to try out. Like, again, if I could get the right support cards. Which is going to be hard to do in sealed. Like, in draft, you have a better chance. So, we'll see if we can make it happen or not. But... Again, we're not going to force it if it's not there. That's the trick. Okay. Legion Lieutenant. Forsaken Sanctuary. Thrashing. Bronte Don. Our rares. Champion of Dusk. Um, that's interesting anyway. A little risky maybe, but it's not a bad card depending on, again, where we go. Fathom, uh, Fathom Fleet Border is a foil. Okay. Two more packs. Still want to see, like, maybe one really... Interesting card, or maybe some stuff to play with Journey to Eternity. That would be sweet. See Red. Enter the Unknown. Foreigner of the Coalition. And Kamina's Awakening. Kamina's Awakening could be good for us, actually. If blue, if our blue's strong. Because I have played against that card in Draft. And it's actually pretty sweet. Like, if you... Especially, like, Game 1, if you don't have stuff to get rid of enchantments. Like, it can kind of steal the game for you. All right, Riverwise Augur, Dead Eye Brawler, Pirate's Pillage, our rare is a Path of Discovery. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is just pause the video real quick, put everything into color piles, and we'll start seeing what we actually have here. So I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. This is a weird pool. We have a ton of blue cards, so we're probably going to play, play blue just because of the numbers. But all right, let's look at white. We're going to try to just get a grasp of what's going on here and maybe get rid of like the sideboard style cards. Um, like this one, for example, is a cool card if our opponent has enchantments and or vampires, but probably not going to start off with it. Okay. 
This potentially has vigilance and flying. It's definitely a flyer. Um, vampire, vampire. Uh, gaining four life, draw a card. There are reasons to do this, but I'm going to put this aside for now until I see good reasons to do it. Because it's a card you don't play a whole lot. It just depends on if you have other things to synergize with it. Um, yeah, this is okay. This is good, good. This is real good. Conquistador, I don't like playing one of. It is a vampire, though. I'm not going to get rid of it yet, because we, I do see a lot of vampires here. Not that we have a lot of white cards, but that's going to be true of all our colors except blue to some degree. So, okay, there's white. Maybe we play that. All right, let's get into the blue here. Yeah, good card. This is a good card. I like the brainstorm effect there. Uh, that is the brainstorm one, right? Yeah, okay. Water knot's great. This could be good for fixing if we want to go third color. Uh, this is a chart course is awesome. I like wind strikers. Uh, this card's great. Favorable wins. I mean, I did see some favorable wins. I'll try to say that again. Okay. Uh, I did see some flyers. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe we do that. Um, if we have equipment worth going for, we'll see in a second. Uh, the spell pierce, I usually don't main deck. Like I'll bring it in if I feel like there's a good reason to, but I think we have enough other stuff. I'm not too worried about it. Um, yeah, this could be okay. I mean, I don't want to play too many of these. Like, we have a lot of amazing card draw spells, but you, you don't want to just have card draw spells necessarily. But a few of them will be good for you. Um, yeah, this can be okay with Ascend. The Communion is Awakening more card draw. So our blue looks good, but it doesn't have, like, the punch. Like, it's got some tricky creatures, but we want some sort of, like, punch, too. I like this a lot. Dusk Legion Soul, it's great. Skull Duggery's great. Got some vampires and flyers here. Hmm. Hmm. I'm starting to think Esper. <laughs> starting to think Esper. We'll see, I guess. Okay. So, those colors are all pretty good. Although, I kind of went through the black kind of fast here. Let me just look and see. Like this one, I'm probably not going to play this. Because again, we're not going really wide. I don't have a ton of pirates either. So I probably don't see myself doing this. Unless something changes my mind in red. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Ryle, I'm probably not going to play unless I see a lot of Enrage. Which I'm not really seeing. Okay, red's fine, but I don't feel like it's as good as our last three colors. I like the synergies that we had in those other colors. I want to try this card out. I, I don't know if it'll be good, but I want to try it out. I feel like once it's on the battlefield, it's good. The trick is getting it on the battlefield and, you know, taking the turn off to do it. Um, binding, blinding Fog, I'm probably not going to play. A lot of things to reduce dinosaurs, but not a lot of dinosaurs. <laughs> okay, sure, sure. And then what do we have here? I like Gobbled Wings, actually, especially with Favorable Winds. Mm -hmm -hmm. This could help us if we want a color fix. Okay, so there we go. And there's a Vampire Lord. I do like that. I don't see us playing Journey to Eternity. I just don't think the payoffs or colors are there. Um, I don't see us going into green for this, unfortunately, because it's a cool card. I want to try that one out, too. And this is okay. We actually might play this because it might fall into our colors. So these two we might play. Uh, we're probably not doing anything with red, so I'm going to take that out. But black and white, we might do something with. So I'll keep that for now. Okay, so now that we got a big picture, kind of look at everything... Um, I can see myself playing these two. I don't think I want to play this necessarily in this deck or this or that. Maybe that. Okay. We get rid of the rest. All right. So I'm eliminating green. I think we're going to go and try to do something with Esper. I'm eliminating red. And here's the trick. <laughs> I want to create a vampire slash flyers deck with a lot of value when it comes to card draw. So, knowing that's my goal now, I'm going to filter down a little more. So, I saw a couple of these. How many secrets did we have? We got too many. It's a great card. I love the card, but we don't want to be playing two of them. So, I'm going to get rid of one for sure. 
Um, this does fetch our cobbled wings. I might actually play that. This will fix. This is good. This is good. This is good. Um, this is good. This is good. This is good. Uh, we might need a two drop. Sea legs. I don't know. This is actually not a bad card. It's better if you have more pirates, though. I think I'm going to drop that one. And I want to play that. Well, I want to play all those cards. Okay. I probably won't be able to play all those cards, but um, Vampire, I'm probably going to drop this. It's actually not a bad card, especially in this particular deck. It does create, well, okay, I'm going to hang on to it. It does create a Vampire. Hmm. Four drop. I don't know, the four drop dinosaur kind of feels like it's just there, right? <laughs> like, so I'll drop that. And I want to keep, for the most part, Vampires. I'll probably drop this. Okay, so that's kind of a quick run through. Now what I'm gonna do is actually make the real cuts. So I'm gonna divide everything into piles based on the creatures and spell and non-creature spells. And then I'm going to go ahead and look at the curve. So I'm gonna pause the video while I sort everything. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And we have a lot of cuts to make. So I'm gonna dive right in. Let's start with the one drop creatures. I wanna keep this because I think it's pretty good. It's kind of like removal. It's a real cheap drop. It slows things down. So I'm gonna try and hang on to it. Let's look at the two drops. Um, definitely wanna keep the vampire. I think we're going with the vampire slash maybe a little bit of light evasion card draw theme. So we're gonna go heavy with vampires. So I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna keep Bishop Soldier. The Dusk Legion Zealots are awesome. We're keeping those. Um, the Sworn Guardian, it's a good placeholder if we needed to drop. I don't think we need any more, so I'm going to drop that one. And I'll keep the Looter for right now, and I'll keep the Barrier, because that also does perhaps give us a chance to fix our colors, although it's a little roundabout. All right, let's look at the three drops. I think we got some cuts to make here. I like the Flying Vampire. That's good. The Conquistador is a vampire, but I'm really not a huge fan necessarily of just playing one of these. So I'm going to drop it. We got other stuff. I think we're just fine. Uh, this is a good card, just generally, like a good aggro card, but it's also a little awkward considering we're not really playing a lot of pirates, so I'm going to drop that one. I think, again, we have better stuff. I'm going to keep the Sailor of Means because that is going to be another way that we can fix color. Um, Slippery Scoundrel could be a win condition. The River Darters I'm going to drop. I mean, they're good uh, curve fillers. They're also good sideboard cards, but I'll bring them in if we're up against a dinosaur matchup. And then finally, the second Sailor of Means I think I'm going to keep... Okay, here comes our bigger stuff now as we get into the four spot. I don't think this is good enough for what we're trying to do being in these colors. So I'm just going to drop this one. We have a uh, Riverwise Augur I'm going to keep. Again, it's going to help us maybe hit our colors with that Brainstorm ability. The Quartermaster, right now I only have one piece of equipment. It's the Cobbled Wings. I don't think it's worth running this for, honestly. Uh, another Flying Vampire I like and the Paladin I like. So we're going Vampires with kind of maybe just light blue because I think blue is a good support color here. Windstrider, it's a good flyer. I'm just going to try to keep that one if I can at five. And then we have three other five drops that are maybe more in our primary colors. This we're definitely keeping because this is going to be a big card draw spell for us. These two, I think I'm going to drop. I mean, two five flyers are a little more defensive than I would have liked. They only have vigilance basically if they both come out. And we're talking about five drops here. I want to keep this deck lean considering we're going a little tight on colors. So... All right, so that leaves us with how many creatures? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's pretty good. I don't want to go any fewer than 16 creatures. And that leaves us at least a little wiggle room for some of these other spells down here. So we'll be able to get about seven of those in probably pretty comfortably. One of which, let's look at our one drops. One of which I definitely want to get in to this build. This is called Duggery. This is sometimes a blowout for you. Uh, the amulet we kind of need here, so we keep it. Uh, March of the Drowned, I don't think we have space for, so it goes. The Cobbled Wings. I like this. I do like this in Limited, even though we do have a fair amount of flyers already, but I'm going to try to hang on to it. I'm actually going to drop the Favorable Winds, just because I don't think we have enough flyers now for it to matter as much as maybe at the beginning. So we have a few, but we have a lot of other things going on too, so I'm going to drop this one. Let's move on to... Wow, we got a lot of three spells here. <laughs> okay. So I want to keep some of these removal spells. Definitely this one. Probably this one. We'll hang on to those for now. Uh, this is a good card. And again, it kind of works with what we're doing. But at the same time, I just feel like I'm running out of room for it. 
and it is contingent upon board state a little bit. So I'm going to go with maybe the more surefire like removal spells and such. It wouldn't be wrong to play this maybe even over cobbled wings or something like that. But I think I'm going to cut this and just try to stay kind of lean. I don't want to go crazy with water knots because we do have some other good removal and these are double blue. Maybe I just keep one in for now and drop the other two uh, because their consistency might be an issue for us. Um, I do like this card, but I do feel like both of these cards, we do have other options. Like we have a chart of course here uh, that I haven't cut yet. And yeah, we also have the vampire that's drawing this card. So these are good cards, but again, I want to focus kind of on removal here. And I'm already kind of over one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven spells right there and we still have two more. So again, another card draw spell. This one can be conditional sometimes. It's a good card. I really wanted to try this one out, but I think I'm going to have to let it go in this build, especially with the double blue. And Divine Verdict, I think I can let this one go too, considering I do have the Bonds, the Water Knots, and the Legion's Judgment. Um, but again, it's not a bad idea to, if you wanted to play any of these four and cut any of the others, like maybe even you could say cut the Water Knot just because of the double blue. So perhaps we do that. And that would leave us with actually no double blue cards. And I think it's probably where we want to be. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and keep the Divine Verdict then. All right, as far as lands go, I mean, we have a pretty even split here. I mean, if you count everything up, you basically have, I think, about seven of each, like seven blue, seven black, seven white, if you count this kind of twice. And considering all of that, I'd probably go with six islands. We have our dual land here in black and white. Remember that. Five planes and five swamps. This is not the most consistent deck. This was a tough pool. This was a really, really tough pool, actually. <laughs> I kind of like the build. I want to try it out, but at the same time, I do feel like this is going to have some struggles if we come up against a really tight deck. And there's other options we probably could have gone with in the pool, but I feel like, at least for my play style, that this is maybe one of the more consistent ones you can come up with. But if you were going to go in a different direction, by all means, I wouldn't fault you because uh, this is a really difficult pool. And I don't know. I kind of like what we built here. I don't think it would win like 5-0 or 4-0 in any sort of sealed event or anything. Maybe this is, if you're lucky, a 3-2 deck or something like that. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but overall it was fun putting it together. And I hope at least you got something out of the process I used. But, hey, until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.